In this video, we'll be looking at costs of production and how they fit onto a diagram in order to make our cost curves. In the first year of the course, we looked at each of the different types of costs faced by firms, and we used this table here to actually illustrate how we could calculate each of those different types of costs. And adding into that now, we're going to look at how we can actually graph these costs with cost on the y-axis and quantity of output here on the x-axis. So if we were to graph on fixed costs, variable costs and total costs, which I haven't here, then we would find fixed costs would be a horizontal line variable costs would slope upwards starting from the origin and total costs would slope upwards as well parallel to that variable cost line but starting at the point where that fixed cost line meets the y-axis but firms decision really based on how much output they're going to produce is going to be based actually more on the average cost and the marginal cost so in our diagrams and our analysis for economics we're going to be focusing on these particular costs of production rather than those fixed variable and total costs so starting with the average fixed cost curve which is this one in orange here, you can see that that takes a downward sloping shape. And that is because as output rises, that total fixed cost will be spread over a greater amount of output. The calculation for average fixed costs is fixed costs divided by output. So it's going to be very, very high at low levels of output. And as output increases, that average fixed cost will come down at first very rapidly and then more gradually across higher levels of output. So looking next at the marginal cost curve, and remember the marginal cost is the additional cost of producing one extra unit of output. And the marginal cost curve usually comes in this tick shape. And the reason for that is because at very low levels of output, increasing the quantity produced is generally quite easy and can often be done more efficiently. So imagine you're running a bakery and the additional cost of producing your sixth, seventh, eighth cake is very likely to be lower than producing your first or second. You might get some benefits from specialisation and division of labour as you add your first or second worker. And that leads to across relatively low levels of output, your marginal cost to come down as you increase your output. But quite quickly, that problem of diminishing marginal returns are going to set in. And we're drawing these cost curves in the short run. And so you get that problem of adding more and more workers while your capital, so your ovens and your shop, remain fixed. And those diminishing marginal returns make it more and more costly to extract those increases in output. And so marginal cost as a result of that is going to rise in this upward sloping way, making that tick shaped curve. Now, what's really most important in all this is the link between the marginal cost curve and the average cost curve. And we're focusing here really on the average total cost curve. And actually, we're going to use the shortening AC for average cost. And when we do that, it's assumed that we mean average total cost, because actually that is really the critical one in most of these situations that we're going to be analysing. So. What is the reason then for this average cost curve, our average total cost curve being this U shape that we can see on the diagram here? Well, the reason is because when the marginal cost is lower than the average cost, the average cost is going to be falling. And this is not something that's just likely, it's something that by definition must be the case. Um, and to think this through, imagine you've got 10 people in a room and they've all got 10 pounds in their pocket. You enter that room with five pounds in your pocket. 
Now, in that situation, you are the marginal person, the additional person entering the room. So you've got a marginal amount, if you can look at it that way, of five pounds in your pocket. Well, in that situation, the average amount has to go down before you've got 10 people with 10 pounds in their pocket. The average amount that each person has in their pocket clearly is 10 pounds. But afterwards, you with your marginal amount of five pounds has actually dragged that average amount down. And so the average after you've entered would actually be around nine pounds 50, just a little bit over. So if the marginal is below the average, the average has to be falling. And similarly, if the marginal is higher than the average, the average has to be rising. So that same situation and you enter the room with 15 pounds in your pocket, then in that situation, the marginal is above the average. And so that will pull the average up in that case, just a little bit below 10 pounds 50 after you've entered the room with 15 pounds. Um, and what that means is that the marginal cost curve must meet the average cost curve at the lowest point of that average cost curve. And so you can see there across this range of output, the marginal cost is below the average cost. So that is what gives rise to the falling part of that average cost curve. And then the marginal cost curve meets the average cost curve at its minimum point. And once the marginal cost is above the average cost curve, then that's going to pull up the average cost and the average cost is going to start rising. So if we accept, as we've just explained, that the marginal cost curve takes this shape, really by definition, that average cost curve must be coming down across this range of output and then increasing across this range of output, making that U-shaped average cost curve.